Hey, I'm John Cannell, and today on Preppy Kitchen, we're making a decadent, delicious chocolate cake. So let's get started. First off, set your oven to 350 so it's nice and hot. Grab two nine inch baking pans, spray with baking spray or some butter. The parchment paper is your guarantee that the cakes will come out neatly with no cracks, no tears. Now into a large bowl, I'm adding two cups or 240 grams of all purpose flour. It's very important that you don't add too much flour. So either use a scale or fluff the flour up and sprinkle it into your measuring cup, then level it off. If you just scoop the flour up with a measuring cup and level it off, you're gonna add 40, 50, 60, 70% more flour and your cake's not gonna be nice and soft and moist. It'll be like dry and bready. Two cups of granulated sugar, that's 400 grams. Perfect. The sugar is gonna make everything sweet, of course, but it also makes your cake soft. If you reduce the sugar in a cake, yes, it'll be less sweet, but it's gonna get harder and breadier. It's gonna lose that wonderful soft consistency we love. My chocolate cake needs chocolate, so half a cup or 50 grams of cocoa powder. Today I'm using a natural cocoa powder, but you can use a Dutch processed as well. To fluff things up, you need 11 or so, one and a half teaspoons of baking powder and one and a half teaspoons of baking soda. Baking soda needs an acid to react to, otherwise it doesn't work as well. So the acid we have here is the cocoa powder. Natural cocoa powder is slightly acidic. It'll react with the baking powder, soda, and give us a puffier cake. And finally, for some balance, I want half a teaspoon of kosher salt. And if I'm ever making a dessert, it needs to have some salt for balance. You cannot taste things unless the salt is there. It doesn't have a flat, sweet note. Right, give this a sift. If you're wondering why we sifted, this is why all rocks of cocoa powder inside. Sometimes any ingredient can clump up, even baking powder, but the cocoa is the main culprit and nobody wants to bite into like a little nugget of pure cocoa powder, no. Press those through. My scale is done, grab a whisk, and we're gonna mix this up. So just give it a really good mix. The sifting started the mixing, but now you wanna get everything nicely distributed. If you've ever had a cake that had these weird little divots or like a crater, guess what didn't get distributed? The baking powder or soda. So that's why part of it just didn't rise up. We want every bite to be perfectly puffy and a nice combination of cake and buttercream. Nice and mixed up. On to the wet ingredients, so grab another large bowl and you have a choice here. You can either use one cup of boiling water, which I'm gonna do today because I have little children who are gonna have this cake, or you can use one cup of hot coffee. It could be an espresso mixture or whatever you'd like. The coffee will really let you taste the chocolate more. It'll amplify the chocolate flavor, but I'm not gonna do that today because Lachlan and George have enough energy as it is. I set some water to boil on a kettle. We'll use that in just a moment. But now in a medium bowl, I'm adding half a cup of veggie oil. If you're wondering why we're using vegetable oil, it's because it'll keep our cake pillowy, soft, even if it's coming straight out of the fridge. If you're using butter, it'll be very hard until it's completely room temperature. Also, the taste of butter will be lost in a chocolate cake. To the oil, I'm adding one cup or 240 mils of whole milk and one table. All right, and one tablespoon of vanilla extract. I'm using the last of this batch. Whisk that up until it's nice and smooth, but don't forget, as I almost did, to add two large eggs. Room temperature, please. One and two. I am such a sucker for this light blue eggshell color. Oh my gosh, so pretty. Okay, now give that a whisk. The eggs should have gone in first, but it's totally fine. It does not matter at all, as long as it's nicely whisked. Grab that dry mixture back. And we have two things to do. First off, we're gonna add our wet mixture in, but do not forget we have that boiling water at hand too. Whisk that up until it is almost combined. It's okay to see a couple streaks of flour hither and thither. I'm reading The Wind in the Willows with my kids. Like every night we read a few pages of it and I love that book as a child that was like one of my core memories, but I forgot how in 19th century the languages, they literally do say hither and thither and so many other words. It's like an exercise in SAT words. 
This looks delicious, but we're gonna add one cup of boiling water and that water is going to add more moisture and also activate the cocoa powder and let it just get more intensely chocolatey. Measure that out. I can't eyeball that. All right, I'm gonna pour this in as I whisk. And here, the batter will be runny. Don't worry about that. All that means is it's gonna be a magical, delicious batter. This is similar to a devil's food cake. It's giving some devil's food vibes. See, super runny, but that's okay. So everything is ready. It's time to divide this evenly in your pans. I'm pulling my scale back because it's my best friend. <laughs> and it'll tell me exactly how much batter is gonna be divided. If you wanna eyeball it, just use a toothpick and you can kind of use it like a, like a little depth meter. It'll tell you exactly how much there is height wise. All right, into the pan. I'm making this cake with two nine inch layers, but you could make it with three six inch layers or three eight inch layers. The six inch layers will be really thick. If you make three eight inch layers, they'll be about an inch thick, so thinner, but still delicious. Okay. It's about 700 grams per pan. Make sure you zero your scale out before you add the batter in. My cakes are ready to go into the oven, 350 for about 35 minutes or until a skewer inserted in the middle comes out clean. And don't worry about using cake strips. This batter is so thin it doesn't need them. In you go. My cake layers are cooling, so now we're gonna make an amazing, delicious chocolate buttercream. Starting with three sticks or one and a half cups or 338 grams of unsalted butter at room temperature. This should be nice and soft, so I can use my finger and press in. It goes really easily and it's gonna cream up very quickly. Cream this on medium for about 30 seconds, just until it's silky smooth. And today I'm using my stand mixer with the paddle attachment, but you can definitely use a hand mixer if desired. Let that cream up, and in the meantime, I have six cups or 680 grams of sifted powdered sugar, no lumps for your cake, and my cocoa powder is ready to use. Hmm. This is natural cocoa powder. I'm actually gonna use a Dutch processed one, just so it's extra dark and chocolatey looking. If you use natural cocoa powder, it's gonna taste great, but it'll be a light chocolate color, which bothers me for some reason. So. That's much better. Look at this difference in color. It'll be a nice, dark, rich, fudgy buttercream. Of course, this is pure rocks of cocoa powder. Look at this. So we're definitely gonna need to sift this out and I'm gonna use a quarter cup or about 25 grams. If you wanna use more, you can use more. <laughs> it's totally to taste. All right, into my sifter. Don't make a mess, don't make a mess, don't make a mess. There we go. I'm just gonna sift this out so there's no lumps of cocoa powder. That's all done. Cream this up one more time on low so the cocoa powder mixes in without creating a giant messy cloud. And once it's incorporated, we're gonna scrape the bowl down. This looks like chocolate deliciousness to me, but for you, plain old sad butter. Mix it up. Scrape it down and look at this unmixed nonsense. That's horrible, we never want that. Whenever you make a frosting, I hope you play with the recipe a little bit. The recipe is like a standard, you know it's gonna be delicious, but you can make it your own. For example, you could swap out half a cup of butter for half a cup or four ounces of cream cheese. Nah, it'll be delicious. I would definitely add less cream though, because that's adding water in. You could use some sour cream, sub that in for the butter or for the cream. And then you could add spices to it too. Mexican hot chocolate buttercream, cinnamon, little cayenne. Ooh, it's gonna be really good. One thing that's non-negotiable for this is the salt. I'm adding in a generous quarter teaspoon. I like it a little bit extra salty. It's gonna make the biggest difference. It'll really let the chocolate pop. You could also add in a quarter teaspoon of espresso powder if you're going the coffee route to amp up the chocolate flavor. Okay, the time has come for us to add the powdered sugar in. I would add a cup or two at a time. And mix on low. You don't want to have a giant mess. There we go. 
as the powdered sugar mixes in, you can alternate with like a tablespoon or so of milk or cream. It's up to you here or sour cream. And by the way, if you're in the spirit, this milk doesn't have to be milk. This milk could be brandy, dark rum, or whiskey. It's a totally different vibe, but you can incorporate any flavor you want. So whatever liquid you want to use is gonna work here. It could even be coffee and you would make it like more of a mocha cake. Ooh, this is looking really nice. Keep going with the powdered sugar. More powdered sugar, more liquid, whatever you want. And as you go, make sure you scrape the bowl down. The top is gonna be sweet and chocolatey and the bottom is gonna be totally just pure cocoa powder and butter with salt. So you really wanna have a nice even mixture so every bite of the cake is uniform. Scrape the bowl down and remove everything from the beater because stuff collects there and it doesn't get mixed properly, especially the top. These are things I wish someone had told me when I was a little baby baker or maybe my mom did and I didn't listen. Last third of the powdered sugar. Mix on low, add the milk. A lot of people complain that American buttercream, which this is, is like too sweet and it's grainy and gritty and dense. That can definitely be the case. It actually has to do with how you whip the butter and sugar together and how, you, how much liquid you're adding. A lot of it's just not made correctly, but a chocolate American buttercream is gonna be delicious. You can sub out some of the butter for sour cream, for cream cheese. You can do like so many different things to it, but adding the salt in, adding the milk in is gonna make it creamy and perfectly balanced. If you're totally set against it, you know, it's not for you, make a Swiss or Italian buttercream. Click up here for my Swiss buttercream video and then this add in melted chocolate to taste. Oh my gosh, it is perfection. All my sugar is incorporated. I'm gonna add one teaspoon of vanilla in. It's optional, but it's a lovely depth of flavor. And the last little bit of milk, so I'm using a full quarter cup here. Always make your chocolate buttercream a little more slack than you think it should be because it sets up. The cocoa powder just absorbs liquid and it kind of just will set quicker than you imagine. We're gonna mix this on medium for one minute until it's light and fluffy. And in the meantime, I'll grab a cake plate, get my cake layers, and we're gonna decorate this up. My cake layers have cooled completely. They're pillowy soft and they smell amazing. Invert this onto a cake plate. Like that. Remove the paper. Don't forget, very important. And now we're gonna add about one cup of frosting right in the middle. Oh my gosh, this looks so good. Spread the frosting out into an even layer, moving it all the way to the side. For the middle, it doesn't matter as much because no one can see it. Pop the next layer on. Just like that. Now cover with the remaining frosting. If your frosting is at all bubbly or set up, just run your mixer for 30 seconds and you can add in an extra tablespoon of cream or milk if desired. Smooth it out and work the frosting down the side. And here, you can decorate this cake however you'd like. Totally up to you. You'll use every last drop of frosting from this, so do not snack too much. Just one spoonful is all you're allowed. Once covered completely, swoop to your heart's content, or you can smooth it out, top with sprinkles, chocolate chips, chopped chocolate, cacao nibs, anything you love. The nice thing about swooping frosting is you can create the illusion of abundance and like so much frosting with all that depth that you're working in, even though it's almost paper thin in spots. So you're using a proper amount of frosting. It's not excessive, but it looks so beautiful. Give your cake a slice and it's ready to enjoy. That is silky, fudgy, but it's still light. The cake is fluffy, but so moist. It's an amazing chocolate cake. So I hope you get a chance to make this recipe. And if you like this video, check out my chocolate playlist.